Alright, so I don't even know if I'm going to hear my microphone. I don't even know if I'm going to post this because I am like all over the place. And this is something I tried to do last week, but due to circumstances beyond my control, I just never got around. Like I got around to it, but I was having technical difficulties and then I didn't feel like I had gotten everything I was going to say out of my chest or off my chest, I should say. So I'm going to try this again. And instead of clumping this into a whole like other topic video game vlog i'm gonna just lump it into its own video game vlog and then circle back later into a different video game vlog talking about the stuff i was going to talk about so i only have my last words and final thoughts on um the last of us part two because i have been watching a lot of youtube reviews and i think it's kind of weird like on youtube it's just this overarching theme of how awful it is and it needs to stop and it's actually i can't lie this is one of the few times i'm actually not wanting to hear what people i need to probably hear what people think why people think it's good but i kind of don't want to hear it because it's actually nice to feel like i'm not the only one because i thought maybe it was me maybe i'm just the one with the problem <laughs> so apparently i wasn't the one with the problem and in all the reviews i've seen they all say the story is just disastrous so I, I'm gonna try to go over I have notes <laughs> not as in-depth as like when I was sitting there writing down as I saw but I have notes on stuff so let me try to make this as coherent as I can I have like little things I want to touch on but and each thing I want to touch on I wanted to you know just give myself time to think so then the first thing I have is the the layers of his part two what went wrong why all the hate okay for part one of this is deceptive marketing practice and fake trailers okay so admittedly i'm not i liked the, the first last of us and even when the first game came out i knew it was coming out i knew it was getting ready to go around i knew it was a horror game and i was like and i don't really play naughty dog games like i never played um uncharted or anything like that so i didn't really know about naughty dog like that so when the first game came out i knew about it and i knew i wanted to check it out and then when i fell in love it was just like oh shit what have i been missing so um basically when the news of the second game came out i just kind of was like i was like i knew that was coming out i was kind of in the camp of why the fuck are they doing a sequel was that really even necessary probably not but i'll check it out so apparently from a lot of reviews i have been checking out a lot of people are actually pissed in part due to the fact that they knowingly added a bunch of fucker or like basically not added stuff but basically in the beginning when they were first talking about it um they were like they had put joel in certain sequences that he wasn't in that they weirdly aged him where he wasn't that grizzled and they just made it seem like he had more of a prominent role in in the sequel than what he actually had and see that business major in me is like all in my ears like well they're they're entitled to do that it's just so people would be all in on the game as a whole if because i'm sure there were like a lot of people like me thinking like well why the fuck are they doing a sequel like we were fine with it where it was so i guess i don't know but they they were just all hold on ah <sighs> sorry about that my husband had to ask me something because it's the fourth of july and we have my older dog has issues with fireworks so we gotta figure out that situation but anyway um god damn it i forgot what i was talking about oh the fake trailers so apparently they added joel made him look older and they did all this rigmarole to try to make it seem like he was in the game more than he was and people were pissed about that and like i said as a business major i'm sure there were people like me who were not were kind of questioning was there a real legitimate need for last of us 2 is this like something that needs to be a thing do we why is this happening so i guess they did it to, to be on board to be like hey we have joel and ellie and people that you love where did she come down and play because this is gonna be it's gonna be popping and that it's not exactly the way to go about that and <laughs> i don't know what they could have done it's a lot of fuzzies on here 
a lot of fuzzies on my microphone. Sorry. I don't know what they could have done to make that situation better, but people don't like feeling like they've been scammed. And I can see who people who, especially you bought this game for $60. I'm sure there were other versions like like collector's editions that were more like 80, 90, 100 plus bucks and that people purchased into on the ideology that they were going to get Joel and Ellie in the saddle again and then they didn't get that and what they got was something like no one asked for. I could see where people were pissed. So if you're going to like don't 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 do it. Don't scam people. Like I can understand where why you why they did it. I can understand why Naughty Dog did it. I I get it, especially as a former business major. I get it, but people don't like feeling scammed, and y'all, <laughs> a lot of people feel kind of bait and switched on, and like they've been scammed. And I'm not going to tell them their feelings are invalid because <laughs> y'all actively. And I think there was an interview recently with Neil Druckmann, the I want to say the creator director. He was like, well, we did that, and he he copped to it. And it's just like, oh, don't, don't do it, man, because people feel, people feel very strongly about stuff, and you just setting your shit, you setting your shit up to get yelled at. So, I mean, you was already going to get yelled at, but you really, really setting your shit up to be, like, hollered at, at the highest, at the highest decibel levels humanly and possibly imaginable. So don't don't with the fake trailers don't ever in life do that again it might seem good on paper it might seem like a good marketing strategy just to be like keep people guessing but just just don't fucking do it either announce the shit and do your best to keep the shit under wraps which that didn't go over well but whatever but just don't fucking actively deceive people because no one likes feeling scammed or tricked it's like imagine how you would feel in that situation like and i throw that out to the creator how would you feel if somebody told you something was one way and then it was completely different you would feel like you got scammed so seriously come on now don't do shit like that going forward in the future just be and if you if you can't be honest at least don't be deceptive <laughs> so i don't know but yeah the fake trailers was part one where people i've seen that a lot like they did this with this trailer and then it wasn't there and it was people were hot about that like i said i looked for well i didn't literally look forward to it i was going to bite was i think always my statement about the last of us too i was always going to watch it but i didn't keep up with the process i don't think i really ever keep up with any video games process when it's in development it's just like oh, okay this is happening all right bet i guess i'll watch it or not depending so i don't like follow the development process through and through so it's just tell me some news when you got some news and I, i'll deal with it but a lot of people actually do keep up with the development process so don't lie to folks <laughs> is my advice so number two on this is botching joel's death this was in this in in that recent interview with Druckmann, he admitted he was like, Well, we knew we were gonna lose people upon Joel's death. Yeah, you you there was probably a good probably I would say fourth of the people, maybe a little more, maybe like a third of people probably would have been mentally tuned out after Joel died. However, it was his death was the way it was the way the placement that it is in the game it's in the first half in the first act basically of the game and it just comes out of no goddamn where and it and you can tell it was done for shock value and to elicit a really negative emotional reaction from the by the player which fucks up the second half of this when we have to deal with the whole abby situation now, a lot of people, I have watched more than enough interviews or reviews where they were like, maybe if Joel hadn't saved Abby from that, in that 40 minute span when the hunter, or not the hunter, sorry, thinking Resident Evil, um, when the clickers were coming at Abby, maybe if she had, if, if Joel hadn't saved her, it might have been a little better if she saved Joel, and like, I don't know, but maybe, yeah, and they and the 
overarching consensus about Botch and Joel's death is it should have came later. I think, and that was my kind of point about it in the beginning. I was just like, this just comes out of nowhere and it's real brutal and, and ugly and kind of half stupid. But it's just, it just, you could tell it was done sheerly out of shock value. It was just no real purpose other than that shock everybody and then it's going to blow their minds. And it's just like, okay, so you're going to kill a beloved for, you're going to kill a beloved character from the first game. Okay. I'm okay with that. I never really got mad about, I never got mad about Joel dying the way most people did. I got mad in the fact that it just was pointless up until like, about 10 to 12 hours in when they finally tell you the crux of why he was murdered and it was just like y'all getting it is now this is something that should have been built up to and even though i didn't express that in my review i'm just like y'all should just it just seemed rushed it just seemed rushed and it was just surely to just shock people and Again, that stuff people don't like, especially when you admit that you know you're going to kill this character, you need to handle that shit with the utmost care, and it needs to come as a shock. And I'm not even talking about the leak situation. This was just something that just did not need to happen at the point in the game where it happened. I could see, like, maybe they kidnapped Tommy, and Joel went to go get them back, and then that whole theater scene with Ellie and Abby and he and and Jesse got killed and like I could see Joel getting killed then that would have been better because at least we would have been like 12 plus hours in and we would have been like invested in maybe everybody at that point but you just fucking he just saves her and then he's like oh I'm Joel I live at 123 fake street and like my I, my blood type is double o negative and it's just like oh my god that was the other thing people were complaining about that Basically, it was completely out of character for Joel to be like, oh, hey, I'm Joel Miller. I live at 123 Fake Street. And, <laughs> I, yeah, when I looked at it and when people said that, I'm like, yeah, he wouldn't have trusted that shit. And I doubt he probably would have, like, he might have saved her. He might have softened up a hair because of the Ellie and all that they had gone through together in the first game. But I really sincerely doubt he would have been like, oh, hey, I'm Joel Miller. I live at 123 Fake Street. So that is weird. But again, it's not something that they should have just done out of sheer shock value. <sighs> give the players some credit. Like, seriously, just give them a, a drop of credit, please. Because doing it like that, it just, it was so wrong and, and stupid. And it, it does not give the player, especially those who played the first game, which the majority of people are going to play the first game. It just doesn't give them the respect that they're due as fans of your franchise. So, if you're going to kill a character, a beloved character from a first game or a previous game or what the fuck ever, it needs to be handled with care. So, and that's my advice to Capcom, because in that Resident Evil 8 trailer, the very first thing that popped up in it was, his story is coming to an end. So, fucking tread lightly, Capcom, because I know there's a lot of motherfuckers out there that love Chris. I ain't one of them, but there's a lot of motherfuckers that love Chris. So, I would tread real fucking lightly if you're planning on killing Chris. It better have a fucking point, and it better have a peak, a point, and a purpose, because otherwise, you're going to end up in a fucking naughty dog situation, and nobody wants that. So, Abby's go to number three. Abby's botched and useless story arc. Let me put a preface on the Abby thing. I still don't care. There, I still, there's whole ass parts of her game that until I started doing the Wikipedia or the wiki on looking at, I just was like, what? Because apparently Abby isn't transgender. She's just a real diesel as they used to say back in the day she's just a real diesel girl i don't know it is her her sexual and gender orientation has i don't care i just as a character i just can't care about her and i've seen that going around too no one asked and no one cares and it's again if you're going to do some shit like this and somebody i watched some some review today they were like they should have just came out and said we have this character that's going to be like a good focus of the game. If you're gonna go all in, if you wanna go balls deep into the Abby thing, I still say it should have came out as a DLC before the second game came out. 
and, and then that way you could have dragged everybody along on this mystical journey of Abby and her sorrowful tale of woe and blow. I wish it was some blow, because they would have been bad hers, mainly, either getting blown or doing cocaine. When either, either way, it's more of a party than what the fuck we got with this game. So, it's just like, y'all just dragged everybody on a fantastic voyage that nobody asked for. And, ugh, I just, I can't. I have a side side, a side note to my side note about Abby. So, basically, and one of the, the I think when um, Ellie goes back and finds out that she was the only one to cure she gets this tape this, she hears somebody talking about how it's kind of pointless to continue to fireflies because the only doctor quote hang on the only doctor that can help with this situation has died i.e abby's father and i'm just like really the only motherfucker in the world the only motherfucker is dead. <sighs> okay. Mention how stupid it was that 20 years post-world collapse that Abby's dad was the only person in the whole world to find a cure and and how there wasn't anyone in big A. Sorry about that. I'm gonna have to edit, which I fucking hate editing. But I just find it ridiculous that 20 years have gone by. So, yeah, because that was, like, right before the stuff happened with Joel. 20 years have gone by, and this asshole had no protege. Wasn't teaching anybody the tricks of the trade. Wasn't doing any fucking thing to make sure that everything that he had learned could be used, utilized in maybe some other, some other situation. No. The only motherfucker in the world fucking drops dead, and there's no one to take his place. That in and of itself is goddamn ridiculous. You would think if you're like one of the few people left with book smarts or book learning that you would have some other motherfuckers training with you so they know what the fuck to do. So I, I am baffled by that one. <laughs> that one stuck in my ass so bad that I'm still trying to reconcile with it. And I had thought about that like when I was watching the game and I just didn't mention it. But yeah, the only motherfucker drops dead. No one else to train. No one else was training with him. No one else was taking his place. I mean, this stupid ass Mel girl was a medic. You would think she would have been like under his tutelage or what the fuck ever. But apparently no. He was the only asshole in the world. And it had all that knowledge and when he drops dead, it just, everything collapses like a fucking flan in a cupboard. Okay, so we're going with that for a stupid fucking plot device, but I guess what the fuck ever, so whatever. But Abby's story, I, I understand what they were trying to do. It looks like with Abby and Lev, and that Lev was actually the transgender one. Abby's an actual biological female. I don't know what the cisgender female, I guess is it called. So, I don't, it still is useless. It's like, I did not care. And I will never know. The only reason why I know a little teeny bit, and I didn't even go into it like that. The only reason why I know a little teeny tiny bit about Abby's story is I took the time to wiki the shit. Because I'm never watching it. I refuse to fucking watch it. I just objectively refuse. Because they went about her the wrong way. And I'm sure a lot of people, after she could... The, again, this is the handle this with care situation that Naughty Dog did not do. But after she kills Joel and very, very brutally and ugly and ugly, a lot of people just mentally checked out. They were mentally checked out of the game, and that is forty, I mean, maybe an hour into it. And you're gonna have people that mentally checked out an hour into the shit in a twenty-plus hour game. That ain't good. So you already screwed the pooch real fucking bad by doing this shit. So <laughs> this was, and I know there's been a lot of talk that some hyper feminist lady, I don't fucking know, was involved heavily with the story. Look, at the end of the day, hyper feminist chick has nothing to do with the writing of the game unless she was an actual writer for the game i think she was just like a consultant and gave input or what the fuck ever honestly 
the writers and the director signed off on the shit and collectively agreed this is what they were going to do. So you can remove whatever hyper feminist lady out of the situation because all she did was offer input. He signs off on it and ultimately was the final decision maker and greenlit the shit. So I don't fucking know. So I know a couple of reviews mentioned the hyper feminist lady and it's just like at the end of the day the onus is still on the director. He greenlit it, so it's on him. The their whole onus falls squarely on his ass. So uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I don't wanna hear it. It's like and I mean, yeah, you have your cause there was a thing about something I had seen regarding Abby and Lev and, and, and whatever that was. And I have to touch on that a little bit later about the SJ overly SJW messaging. And <laughs> again, the man that was the director greenlit it all. He agreed to it all. So you can't get mad at outside input when he, at the end of the day, had final say and was like, yeah, let's do this. We doing this. So you can't get mad at somebody else for having input and they're not the ones who get the final say. The director had the final say. He could have put a stop to it and didn't. So that argument about all of that, we'll touch on a little bit later, but I'm saying. So it's like, again, you did not handle, you didn't even handle Abby with care. If her whole thing was supposed to be, she was supposed to be passing kind of the torch from Joel and Ellie's story to her and Lev's story, you didn't handle it right. You just went about it so slapdash and slackily and with the most heavy handed, like, you must like her. Now we're going to make you make her scared of heights. You must like her. You must sympathize with her. And one of the people who, who I was watching a review was like, she is one of those people that she likes killing folks. Like, she was going straight up cold blood, brutal fucking murder, fucking murk the shit out of Dina. Because Ellie tells her she's pregnant. She's like, oh, good. Like, that was... And, but I'm supposed to feel bad that the bitch can't cross, like, a high place without getting freaked out. So the fuck what? <laughs> I'm supposed to be sad that Ellie killed her dog, because apparently Ellie kills her dog. The dog got in the fucking way. The dog was part of the problem. Hey, if it's in my way, what did Mr. Burns say was the cause of his parents' death? Got in my way. <laughs> Motherfucker got in my way. They get murked. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. It's like, oh, she cares for children. Oh, she loves her pets. There's a lot of despotic people that have people in their lives that they care for. A certain horrible fascist in Germany who wore leather and was rejected from an art school had a dog and some bitch that he married. Does that make it so we should feel... No. No. We should never feel bad for that person. Not at all. Because just because you have fucking pets and you have people you care for doesn't not make you a murderer (laughs) and a cold-blooded sociopath. So, no, you went about the Abby situation completely wrong. And again, the onus falls on the writers and the one who greenlit the shit. So, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. You can't be mad that people didn't sympathize with Abby because you didn't really give people who really could sit and kind of take themselves away from the Joel situation a chance to really even see her in a sympathetic light. Again, oh boo who they killed her dog. Oh boo who Joel killed her dad. Oh boo fucking who that she's afraid of heights. Who gives a shit? So, and this is the thing. It's like <laughs> this is this goes into number four. Force feeding the player to force feeding the player an empathy sandwich let's look at this let's let's look at the world that the last of us is in so this is a world where humans are extremely feral and they're feral basically because they're in they are in the most ultimate form of survival mode it's not just, you know, oh, I don't have no internet. I ain't gonna make it. No, you running from fucking monsters <laughs> and some shit. You running from monsters and all manner of fucked upness. You are in the ultimate level of survival mode. So you, you painted this world where people are savage. People are brutal. People are doing 
literally anything to survive. People are literally, in some cases, eating other people to survive. What the fuck? Where does empathy fit into this world? You Basically, even in the first game, remember that part where they were driving through Pittsburgh and the dude is like, help me, I'm sick, or whatever the fuck he said? And, and Joel just basically hits him when he pulls. He's like, that guy's not even hurt. And the dude starts pulling out a gun as Joel speeds up having empathy for that guy would have gotten him killed so you can't paint this world of ultimate savagery and then turn around the next game and be like but you should feel bad for people oh oh you shot somebody's beloved dog oh oh some guy got fucking shot and they're calling like oh they got steve steve's down oh shit steve they got ronda they fucking murked ronda no, <laughs> that is not how this game gets played. You can't paint a world where it's all fucked up and literally humans are at their most savage, their most feral because they are in a desperate attempt to survive with the fuck, to like stave off death for another three or four hours. You can't paint that picture and then be like, oh, you should feel sorry for Steve. Steve got in the fucking way. What did I just say? Cause of death got in my way. That was why Steve died. Now maybe next time Steve in his next life won't fuck up and hide behind a bush where he won't get fucking murked because he was in the goddamn way of progress. So you can't you can't have it both ways. You can't set up a world where people are savage and then be like, but empathy. It's like, it, you, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> Stop force feeding people an empathy sandwich, which is the same thing with the Abby situation. Stop. <laughs> Somebody had a meme and I was waiting for it to happen and I've never seen this movie, but the line from all um, Mean Girls, stop trying to make Abby happen. You need to stop trying to make Abby happen because you just lost folks early on because you didn't handle that situation right but then the whole forcing people to be empathetic to her like oh joel killed my dad there's a lot of people that did a lot of warp twisted shit in that world you ain't fucking special bitch i am sorry <laughs> it's a lot of people had to do a lot of fucked up things to survive lord only knows what dina went through because dina and ellie are having a conversation where ellie dina's telling ellie about or ellie's telling dina about when she killed that guy in the last of us one to save joel um, the first time she killed somebody, she was 14. Dina's like, I'll fucking kill some dude at 10. Like, what the fuck did you go through? God damn. So, you, you can't have it both ways. You just, oh God, you just cannot. Cannot have it both ways. So, I can understand with with the messaging, messaging which goes into number five. It was, was it too much SJW nonsense? Was it too preachy? Yeah, it really was. Um, and that's not to say I'm all for games that are just mindless entertainment. I like mindless entertainment for me is Streets of Rage, but at the end of the day, kind of even in the original Streets of Rages, especially two and three, it was like about how robots are well, not two. Two was just let's save our city because our city's going to hell in a handbasket. So that was the messaging for that. So, and then you should, I guess the messaging could be like, be proud and stand up for the city that you live in so it doesn't go to hell in a handbasket. That's a nice message. Before Metal Gear got all fucked up in MGS4, it was, oh, nuclear war is terrible. Let's not have nuclear war anymore because it's terrible and it does nothing but fuck up the environment, fuck up people, just destroy lives and, and everything. Let's not fucking do that anymore. But then, like in the fourth one, it turned into nano machines and fuck that message because that makes no goddamn sense but what the fuck ever so yeah that had a message i guess if you want to get into the core of resident evil that tinkering with biological shit is just terrible and it will just leave us all dead and mutated at some point so let's not fucking do that so i guess that would be the message of resident evil although that message is usually more of mindless entertainment but I guess if you wanted to say you had a message that would kind of be the message, you can give a message to a video game without, again, shoving it down everybody's throats, forcing them to listen to this message. And again, you can't really have a, well, these people in win, but if you don't kill somebody, you, you die yourself. You can't, you can't have it both ways. So, 
uh, was it too much social messaging in it? I think it wasn't that it was too much social messaging in it and social sign and virtue signaling and all that. I think it was just handled badly. You can put messaging in a game that can get through to the player and make them think and make them like reevaluate something that they might have held on tightly to without basically shoving it down their fucking throat. And really with video games, it should be more subtle because we have more than enough stuff in the world telling us this is bad and that's bad and da 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 and there's no subtle messaging. You, I mean, I hate to say you catch more flies with, with honey than with vinegar, but people don't like being preached to. People don't like shit that's too fucking preachy, and I think this game just went a little too far with their messaging, and it just got way too fucking preachy, and people just couldn't, it, they just mentally freaked out. I mean, really, of the reviews that I saw, there was only two reviews that I had to pretty much stop watching because I knew they were going to take that hard, trolly stance of, oh, the lesbians, and one of them had something to say about Dina being Jewish, and I'm just like, okay, you're a fucking... You need, you eating one of them, you eating hard off that bigot sandwich, and you need to stop. So, but, for the most part, most people were just like, it just was too, too much. It's like, do it in a more subtle way, and you can probably drag people, well not drag, but you can probably bring people along on what you're trying to say, as long as you're not punching them in the fucking face with it. Stop punching people with your messaging. It needs to be handled subtly. So, and then again, you didn't do it. You just went balls deep and no lube. You just went balls deep in and with no lube. You didn't pat somebody. You didn't tell them it was okay. You just stuck it in and that's where it is. How could, how could they, everything been improved? <laughs> There's way more people that handle this way more, like, eloquently. Because, again, I didn't, I will never, ever, 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 ever watch the whole game. I refuse. Because, again, I can't handle the, the Abby stuff. And I can't handle it for two reasons. I don't care is the primary reason. And two, it's just, it doesn't, even on the wiki stuff that I saw, it doesn't interest me. It just seemed like they really, really wanted the Joel, Joel Ellie torch to be passed to her and love to Abby and love and you lost me way too early on to make that pipe dream a reality <laughs> so that I would never watch that game but basically the overall messaging that I got was you shouldn't have, the way you handle Abby was so fucked that it should have came the Abby stuff should either came for me should have came before this game came out and then it came out with the second game or had re had redone the whole script and placed basically everything out of order. Cause, well, not out of order, but there's other people that co cover that more competently than me. But for me, it's just like, you should have just, if you're going to go all in on Abby, it should have came first. And then people might have been able to sympathize. Like, they would have came with it. And somebody was like, well, they couldn't probably do it that way because of marketing. And they were scared they were going to lose millions of dollars. But... I think if they had handled the, handled, like, made Abby's game first and put that out first before this game came out, that they probably would, like, people, they might not have got the sales that they wanted in, in the short term, but long term, they might have grabbed a couple people, like, oh, that was, that was pretty popping, especially, imagine had that happened, and then they, you, they hit you with the Joel thing an hour in, and... That would have been like, well, damn. And then you could have, like, basically chosen who you wanted to side with. So, but no, they had to punch you in the ass with the whole thing, with no lube. I mean, punch you in the ass. No lube, just fist in your anus with no fucking lube, leaving people screaming and crying. So, that's just what the fuck happened. And it's, it's so fucked up. It is so terribly fucked up. And... <laughs> I don't know. They're talking. It, one thing I said, they say some. One thing I saw, somebody was like, "Oh, they're they're, they're never going to do a three. Please don't do a three, because you really did not handle this sequel with care. It just and the fucked up part of me saying this is, it took them seven years, seven years, seven 
fucking years. If a child was born the day The Last of Us came out, that kid is currently seven years old. Seven years. And y'all, there was so much they could I'm like, y'all could have did Dina's story would have been better. Y'all could have did fucking, like, um, Tommy and Joel, what the fuck they went through before all that, before, like, when, when Joel went real evil and went dark for them 20 years that he was all fucked up, y'all could have did Joel and Tess would have been a good one. I'm like, I would have even taken what the fuck happened to Bill. Remember Bill was living in that one town by himself? I didn't live with some fucking Bill stories, but now. This is what we got, and this is the hand we were dealt, and it was it was a shitty hand, and now we got four hundred thousand dollars riding on a fucked up head, and we are going to literally be fucked. So, last word on it. I can't take it no more. I need to stop watching reviews, and actually, I need to watch reviews why people like it, because I'm genuinely curious. Like, why do you like this? Because there was so much, like the gameplay. You know what the weird thing is? The gameplay. I've seen reviews where it's mixed about the gameplay. Some people love it. Some people hate it. And I'm just like, okay, I, I, there's no consensus on what, what it was like to actually physically play the game. Some people like that it handle, handled like the first game. Some people fucking hated how it handled like the first game. Um, one thing that everybody universally as a whole praises is the accessibility. Like you can, like if you have motion sickness, you can fix the game where it won't make you as motion sick it the accessibility option from what i saw was like whoa they really put a lot of thought into that i wish they had put a little more thought into the goddamn storyline as much storyline as they as much thought as they put into the accessibility option i wish they put that kind of care and forethought and insight into story but oh fucking well so since I have to fucking splice two parts of this together, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here, and I will try to get around to doing another video game vlog talking about the other topics that I was going to talk about in that one that I never posted, so keep an eye out for that, and then I have a Lolita vlog coming up this weekend, so that's happening, but for now, that's all I have, and later! <laughs>